Hello again guys, this is another video for the toolkit workflow video series. It's about the gradient map maker and also how you would do it manually if you wanted to uh, and why I think it's better to do it with the tool like this if you need it. So um, in order to demonstrate we need to first uh, Destroy the skin a little bit. Uh, let's use cyan. It's a good color. Let's put the dot right there. And uh, set it to color. So we not we know it's a color issue and not luminosity. And uh, then on top here now, let's uh, do the manual way first. So the manual way would be to have a gradient map on top here. You have to set the opacity to zero to be able to sample colors. Then you have to click on it. And then at the far end here, you probably shouldn't be here at all because that should be the blacks. Uh, so the darkest parts and also I noticed I have maybe too big of a sample, 11, no, oh, that should be good, okay. So, um, if you want to create the gradient map uh, that has the natural variances of the skin that's in this area, I'm actually going to hop out of this and show it first. So if we open up the color picker here, uh, look at the uh saturation and hue here is most important uh brightness is not the same as luminosity but i'm not gonna go into color models that's way too complex for this short video um uh, need to be on. thank you photoshop let's just be on this layer okay so if I sample a shadow uh, or somewhat shadow, you want to be as close as possible uh, because um, the natural variances of saturation and hue um, is going to be different depending on where on the body it is. And especially on a portrait like this where it's not um, very even at all. Um, but it adds a, a, a bit of realism as well, so I, I don't mind. But if I want to fix, fix an issue, then uh, I want to pick from colors that are close. So um, if I look here at around here, it's about 60. I'm looking at saturation. The hue is about the same here, 23. Saturation, about 60 at the lowest. So that's a decent area to pick from. And then if I go towards brighter here, uh, this is now somewhat of a mid-tone. And it has 56 in saturation and 26 in hue. And if you remember, we had... 23 in hue and 63 in saturation does might not seem like much but like this is one percentage off and then you're gonna be able to tell so either you do it in many layers and just stack on top on top on top with very soft brushes uh, or you get the color picks correct and you tweak them uh, even when I use the automated uh, version, uh, which I'll explain shortly, I will still tweak a little bit and look at the saturation on the different color picks. So, uh, okay. And then we look at the very highlight here. Uh, the brightest I can see that's close at least, maybe this, um, has about um 87 in brightness 
I don't know what it would be in luminosity. Uh, it's not gonna be exactly 77 either, but probably closer to to the lightness in, uh, in lab. But anyway, that's a bright one. And the saturation is 38. And the hue is now 30. So what we could tell from this three picks that I looked at uh, is that the way the skin behaves in this image uh, it's going to depend on uh, every image and the light that was used but it's always going to be at a variance uh, there's nothing that's ever flat unless it's uh, no color <laughs> um, so again over here 65 saturation let's just look at saturation for a bit because now i know where the darks midtones and highlights are uh, for this range at least 67 saturation at the darks midtones 50 48 highlights uh 36 so it goes down right uh and up so Yep, that's usually how skin behaves. Uh, shadows um, almost always have more saturation, and highlights almost always has uh, less saturation. Um, but the midtone is very rarely in the dead center of between highlights and shadows and the midtones is actually more important because that's the one that has the most similarity to what you're picking okay enough about that let's create this gradient map now so activate again remember i have it at opacity zero otherwise i won't be able to color pick and now i open this at the end here i'm gonna drag this in a little bit because I don't want, um, or I can add black here. It's it's a personal preference, I guess. I just don't like the way it does this. Um, I'd rather mask it to use blend if. So okay, so this one is the shadow that we wanted. It's about here. It has brightness. 20 or so um, means it should be even higher here um, and then we want uh, the highlight to be this one around here maybe even here is a little bit brighter it's more similar tone and if we click on this one, it has 75, 70. Yeah, so it would be around here. And then I add a mid tone. And then I need to look where I had it. I think around here. And this is pretty much a mid tone. I can lower it a little bit. So. Now I did a um, manual one. As you saw, uh, it's quite a bit of work. Uh, but this one's going to be pretty decent. So let's test it. Um, invert the mask. Opacity 100. And... The way you can test if, if it's really good is if you leave it on normal when you do your first check. So I can tell that the colors here is good, but the, um, because of the endpoints, I would have to use blend if or, or, or um, mess with more range of colors. But mostly, that was not how you do it. You set it to color. 
and then you make sure you double over the area a little bit not this sloppy that i'm doing right now but basically that's fixed i would tweak it a little bit more with curves and then like zoom in and look uh, at stuff and also at the hundred percent it's not that good i can see some desaturation issues here um so that would mean that this one would need slightly more saturation i guess let's try it why is it not updating what is the mask even let's look at it It's this whole area. Yeah. Well, I was sloppy with the mask. Either way, you can tweak, but that's how I would do manually. Um, and uh, not hundred percent flow when you're fixing stuff. It's just because I created this um, very, uh, very, very strong. So if the issue was not as strong, maybe it was like this, then it would be much easier to fix. Because uh, you don't have to be so... I'm using a mouse now, by the way. But... So, yeah. That's the gradient map. Let's use uh, the gradient map maker because it automates what we just did for 12 minutes and the one I did now I've done it quite a bit so I know what to look for in both uh, hue and saturation and I know in my head what that maps to in luminosity there's no way of knowing uh, a luminosity from these values without calculating it uh, because these are different color models. HSB is hue saturation brightness as one color model. Uh, from the RGB values, you definitely can't see any. Uh, LAB is close for some colors, um, but L stands for um, uh, lightness. And SMIC is uh, definitely not correct either. So you need to know the mix, and I look at these, and I look compare the two of these, and it's, it's a mess. It's difficult. So now the magic trick after a way too long video. Um, I press gradient map maker. I select a good. Um, I press enter because I'm lazy. I don't want to press the OK. That means that color is stored. Uh, I press around here because I want a brightness. Yep. And around here. And a little bit more towards the right. Okay. And done. So. And we are at flow C and done. A little bit quicker, wouldn't you say? And it looks like this. That's the points it put out that it thought it needed. Uh, these two I can see are a little bit close together, so, but it's it's fine. Um, yep. Also added blend if to protect highlights and shadows, and this blend if is also calculated depending on the colors that you picked. 
so it's very important um in the past uh cuz uh they do have something here called opacity so if i take this away opacity here and i have this as white should be sorry i'm nerding out a little bit but i got a question about this so uh it looks like now that i would have transparency here right but i don't because this is not working the the top here is not working for adjustment layers so you have to use a blend if and the blend if needs to match uh, the range of colors that you use and the picks needs to be mapped to a, a curve so it's even i mean it's not perfect here i would still maybe add a curve on top and adjust the colors a little bit more but from this to this it's fine it's a quick fix all right that's all i want to say about the gradient map maker i think um wasn't really meant to be an educational video but it turned out that way anyway so enjoy and see you in the next one